life on Facebook. It's always exciting to see if it's working because nine out of 10 times it works, but one out of the 10 times it doesn't work. And then, yeah, you don't get it to work, but it looks like it is working and that I am streaming this live to Facebook. So let me check. I indeed think that it is working the way I want it to. And then I can also share it into my group, which means more people have the opportunity of seeing it and of you are there. And it keeps not responding the way I want it to. Ah, here it is. Good, I am almost live everywhere. And if you wanna have the first And oh, looks like there may be some connection issues. So if you can hear me good, uh, correctly, and, and you can see me correctly, I would also love it if you could let me know that. That would be amazing. And let's... doing this through Zoom and then streaming it to uh, Facebook because it will give me the optimal results with recording. And recordings from Zoom, for instance, are much better than the recordings of uh, Facebook. And yes, I am live everywhere. So welcome, welcome, welcome everybody that is here. Robin says you keep freezing. Yes. Thank you, Robin. I think I was having some connection issues, some internet issues. So I need to check if that keeps on happening. Um, I think it is solved for now, but if not, then please tell me, then I will step away for a moment. And instead of using Wi-Fi, I will put in the cord to have wired internet. But I would prefer it if I was not having to do that because it means going away from you and it will take more time. So I am being positive and sending out into the universe that this is going to work and that you are going to see me. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is HSP TV episodes 59, using your mind to get the results that you want. Have you ever done something that you know is bad for you? Like smoking a cigarette or eating too much greasy food, for instance. And maybe you've hit the snooze button on your alarm while you know you should get out of bed because otherwise you will be late. Or maybe you want to lose weight and you've put yourself on a diet, but still you give in to those late night cravings, eating a piece of chocolate or a bag of chips while you know that that won't help you lose the weight. And maybe you've bargained with yourself and told yourself you could have this piece of chocolate, but tomorrow, Tomorrow you are going to go running to get that piece of chocolate off again and ended up 
not doing it. And maybe you even said to yourself, I am going to exercise more because I want to be healthy and I want to feel good in my skin. And you joined a sports club to show that you were serious, only to stop after having gone only a couple of times. If any of this resonates with you, I want you to know that I truly appreciate where you are coming from. Why? Because I've been there. I've done those things. And I've experienced every single one of these feelings of frustration and stress and unhappiness. I knew late night snacking was bad for me and that it was not helping me in losing the weight, but I did it anyway. I knew meditating daily was good for me and that it made me feel calm and centered, but I stopped doing it after a while. I don't even know why. I knew breathing from the belly is important and that I had so much more control over myself and my emotions and how the day went if I grounded myself every morning. But still, I stopped doing it. And every time, I was so disappointed with myself for not being able to stick with it, for falling back into old habits time and time again. And I felt so frustrated not only with the situation, but also with myself. Why couldn't I just do the things that I knew were good for me? Why was I such a wimp? Why was I such a failure? I know I'm smart. I know I have perseverance. So why can't I stick with doing the things that I know are good for me and to not do the things that I know are bad for me? But I figured it out. I figured out the answer to the whys. I now know how to stick with the things that are good for me and how to stop doing the things that are bad for me. And the best part, the best part is I now get to teach others just like me to do the same. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Barbara and I'm a transformation and empowerment coach for what I like to call intuitive ambitious aliens. Those are highly sensitive intuitives and empaths who have always felt weird or strange or like they didn't fit into this world, but who want to be deeply connected to their spiritual self and have this crystal clear vision of the life that they truly want to live. I help them to unleash the power within to get more clarity on what's really important in their lives and to reignite their passion and purpose so that they can achieve their dreams. So today, in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to walk you through why do we continually do things that produce results that we don't want? What are paradigms and why do we want to shift them? Where do my paradigms come from? And how do I change my paradigms to get the results that I want? So let's get started. Earl Nightingale said, whatever we plant in our subconscious mind and nourish with repetition and emotion will one day become a reality. In episode 57, I talked about the gap between what we know and what we do. So if you missed that episode, you can find it in my YouTube channel under HSP Coach Barbara. Or if you are a member of the tribe of Solpreneurs, you can find it in the video unit of that group. Most of us are confronted with the same challenge every day. We are doing things we don't want to do. And we are getting results that we don't want to get. And for some strange reason, we continue to do them anyway. But why? Why do we continually do things that produce results that we don't want? The answer is because of our paradigms. But Barbara, what are paradigms? A paradigm is a collection of habits that cause your habitual behavior. So what is a habit? A habit is an idea that is fixed in your subconscious mind that causes you to do something without any conscious thought. Paradigms could be controlling just about every move you make. 
And when you understand how to build a new paradigm to replace the one that's presently running your life, you will have opened a door to getting all the results that you desire. Joel Barker said this, to ignore the power of paradigms to influence your judgment is to put yourself at a significant risk when exploring the future. To be able to shape your future, you have to be ready and able to change your paradigm. Our entire civilization is founded on habits and work practices and attitudes and beliefs and expectations. And these are also known as paradigms. And armed with these paradigms, you approach and react to the world around you, interpreting what you see and experience according to your mutual understandings and those culturally determined guidelines. So a paradigm in a sense tells you that there is a game what the game is and how to play the game successfully. Okay, Barbara, you might be thinking, I understand now a bit what a paradigm is, but what is a paradigm shift and why should I care? I love that question. A paradigm shift then is a change to a new game or a new set of rules. And when the rules change, the whole world will appear to be changing. In other words, change your paradigms and you will change the way that you create your results. If you truly want to change your results, you must not let the limiting paradigms of your environment, which is your outer world, influence or alter your beliefs, which is your inner world. Michael Barsh said this, People do not resist change when it's their choice. People resist being changed. This is a deep one, so give it some thought. I'll, re I'll repeat it. People do not resist change when it is their choice. People resist being changed. Be honest. How true is this for you? How true is this for you? I would love it if you would share it with me, either in the comments or if that's too private, or too public, I mean, with sharing it with me in a personal message or WhatsApp or um, Messenger, for instance. You might be thinking, okay, Barbara, I get that. But how do I get stuck with my paradigms? Well, you must first understand that a paradigm is a term used to describe a majority of information that is programmed into your subconscious mind genetically at the moment of your conception and then environmentally after you are born. And this information or the paradigm is then expressed in behavioral patterns producing the results that you get and see in your life. The paradigm is what structures your logic. And as you gain a deeper understanding of your paradigms, it will become obvious that logic on a conscious level and paradigms on a subconscious level shape the way that you look and experience the world. They literally place you in a box beyond where you cannot see without the effective use of your imagination. The genetic conditioning is quite obvious in the way that your body looks, for instance. It's why you look so much like your relatives. Unfortunately, the paradigm has such a huge influence over the use of your conscious faculties. And by that, I mean over if and when you use your imagination, that you will generally unconsciously use it in a negative way against yourself. You will create an image in your mind where you see the conditions and circumstances as the dominant role and they become a submissive to you. And this puts you in a position that prevents you from moving forward. Okay, Barbara, that really sucks. So how do I make the shift and break out of that box, you might be thinking. 
Well, in order for you to make a shift in logic and to break out of that box towards freedom, understanding, courage, and determination is required. And this usually, this usually only happens with the help of a coach or a mentor. So if you find yourself struggling with discovering and changing your paradigms, aka your habits, then contact me because I would love to talk with you and to see if and how I can help you move past all the things that are preventing you from living the life that makes your heart sing. On a much broader level, you can say that our culture is a paradigm because culture is really group habit expressed in a lifestyle. Now, what do I mean by that? Paradigms are either positive or negative and are expressed in either positive or negative results. So if you are experiencing recurring negative results, it is important that you understand that the cause of the problem does not lie with the circumstances or conditions outside of yourself, but that the cause lies within you because it lies with your paradigm. It is the paradigm that has attracted the conditions or circumstances that contribute to the problem. And with the proper understanding, you have the ability to change that paradigm. But becoming aware of paradigms and their limiting ability alone is not going to change your situation. At this point, you have to become aware of how to alter your paradigms. Okay, Barbara, I get that. But how do I change my paradigms to get the results I want, you ask? I love that question. Because this question, this question takes us back to the point that a paradigm is a collection of habits. And some of these habits will be good, which produce wanted results or results that you actually enjoy. But it is the habits that form the negative aspect in the paradigm that require changing. Realizing that your paradigm is a collection of habits and that habits require a considerable amount of attention and discipline before they are changed. The question then becomes, which habit should you work on and how do you change it? You begin by identifying the results that you are not happy with in your life and that you would like to see improved upon. Understand that your results are the manifestation of an image that you have in your subconscious mind. It is a part of your perception of what you are capable of achieving or accomplishing. So when you are clear on the results that you want to improve upon in your life, you then identify the habits that are responsible for these results that you want to improve. And then you start to improve those habits or you replace those habits with new ones. Focusing on one or maximum of two habits at a time is best. Improving habits and changing paradigms will have an effect on all areas of your life not just your work life. So when you are trying to improve your habits, I want you to consider the following. All thinking people generally believe their results can be improved. It has been determined that your behavior is causing your results. So ask yourself, what is causing your behavior? Review your own performance and become aware that the behavioral patterns that are causing the results you do not want are habitual. Understand that paradigms are a collection of habits and to establish new, improved and permanent results, you must change your paradigm by changing your behavior that changes your habits that leads to changing your paradigm. It is not uncommon for you to experience a temporary improvement in your results. However, 
when it seems that the improvement is always temporary and never permanent, then that is because the improved behavior that is causing the improvement in your results is forced and cannot be sustained in the long run. It's not your natural self. So you ultimately give way to the old habitual behavior and in doing so, quickly return to the results that you do not want to have. So if you want permanent improvement of your results, the paradigm must be changed. And to change paradigms, you must change your habits and your behavior in a way that is natural to you and that is sustainable in the long run. It has been established that if you attempt to change more than one or two habits at the same time, you generally end up changing nothing. It is also a common error for a person to merely eliminate a negative habit, thinking the results will improve. It has been established that if a negative habit is not consciously and deliberately replaced with a positive habit, another negative habit will automatically replace it. So when reviewing these points, the conclusion is then that to change your results, you should select one or two habits that require changing and immediately begin to move into action. So come up with a plan to improve your habits and start doing it or replace the bad habit with a new positive one immediately. For instance, imagine someone that used to drink Coca-Cola and then gained the understanding that it added nothing to their health or to their body and that it very likely took away from it. The habit of drinking Coca-Cola is then replaced by drinking from a bottle of clear, clean water. Your reward for improving or exchanging these habits for better or new ones will be amazing. However, discipline combined with aggressive action will be required for you to replace the habits that have to be replaced in order for your desired result to manifest in your life. When you are preparing yourself to move to, move to a new dimension of productivity in your life, it is important that you relax completely. You are about to begin reprogramming your subconscious mind. And the strategy that I am suggesting to accomplish this is extremely effective. Your subconscious mind is totally deductive. And what I mean by that is that it has no ability to reject what you feed it. It will accept whatever you impress upon it as reality, regardless of whether it is imagined or real. And this is a very important part. So your subconsciousness does not distinguish between things that you are thinking that are real or things that you are thinking that are imagined or that you want to be real. For the subconscious mind, it is all the same. So all true professionals employ this Im imaging process, whether they are in sports, in business, or in life in general. So to totally relax yourself, visualize a funnel of lavender energy flowing into the crown of your head, circulating through your head and then going down into every area of your entire body. And as this energy freely flows to and through you, circulating into every molecule of your being, let your body become very light. Mentally envision yourself already in possession of the results that you desire. The results are as real in your mind as the clothes that you are wearing. So really see the picture in your mind. Now write down a detailed description of yourself already in possession of the good that you desire. 
state how you feel and write it in the present tense. So write it like it's already in your life at present. Write so clearly that if a stranger were to read the description, the words would create an image in the reader's mind that would be a replica of the image that you are holding in yours. These are wonderful exercises that you can already do by yourself that will immediately start making a huge difference in your life. However, if you want long lasting results and are serious about changing your life and getting the results that you desire, then I would strongly advise you to find a coach or a mentor like me, for instance, to help you. If you are not doing the things that you know you should be doing, if you want to stop doing the things that you know you should not be doing, or if you just want help in changing your paradigms and your habits to start getting the results that you truly want in life, then you and me, we need to talk. Just think how less stressed and excited you will feel when I help you to get clear on what your habits are that are holding you back from having the results that you desire. Can you imagine the sheer sense of relief and feelings of long lost happiness when I help you get clarity on your paradigms and which habits and which behaviors to change so that you can start doing what is good for you? Just think for a moment how life can and will change for you when you only have habits and behaviors that support you in your life from now on. If this resonates with you, and if you are serious about changing your life and getting the results that you truly desire, then I would like to invite you to hop on a no strings attached free discovery call with me. In this call, we are going to get really clear on what paradigms you have now and which habits and which behaviors you need to change with a step-by-step -step action plan that will get you the life that you truly want to live. Click on the link below this video or send me a message in Facebook Messenger or LinkedIn Messenger or WhatsApp and we will get you set. I'll never forget the stressed and very unhappy life I led when I was not getting the results that I really wanted. Unsure about how to go about changing that. Not aware of the habits and behaviors that were blocking me from doing what I knew was good for me and getting the results that I desired. Doubting myself and my abilities. Doubting my resolve and my commitment doubting if I could even reach the things that I thought I wanted. Not knowing why I couldn't just stick with the program, couldn't just do what I knew I needed to do, being angry and disappointed with myself. And it wasn't until I discovered the paradigms and the underlying habits and behaviors that were stopping me from having the results that I so longed for, that I was able to create real and long lasting change. Now I know how to change my behavior, how to change my habits and how to shift my reality to be able to live a life that truly makes my heart sing. Your life will be so much more rewarding and fulfilling if you are able to do the things that you know are good for you with supporting behavior and positive habits that will get you the results that you desire. And that, that is what I want for you too. So click the link below, make that appointment with me and take the first step on the road to living the life you love. I thank you for being here with me for this 59th episode of HSP TV. I hope it was incredibly valuable to you and I hope that it gave you new insights. I'm now checking 
if there are any questions. So if there are any questions that you would like to ask me or if there are experiences that you would love to share, then I would love it if you would take the time right now to share them with me. If you are live in the, re the, in the episode, live in the episode, I will give you an immediate answer to your question or a response to whatever you want to, to share with me. And if you are catching this in the replay, then I want you to know that you can still ask me your questions. I will answer each and every one of your questions, even if you are asking me in the replay, just type in hashtag replay and your question, I will get notified and I will answer it immediately. I am not seeing questions in my Zoom audience. And I have also not seen that I was freezing anymore. So I am hoping this was a very successful episode. Robin says, thank you for this information. I'm really enjoying your online course. Oh, thank you for sharing that with me, Robin. I love the questions that you're asking. I love the progress that I see within you. And I feel so incredibly grateful that you joined my program and that you are really enjoying it and that you are sharing this with everybody. So thank you for that. I love, love, love all your questions. I love, love, love all your comments. I'm now checking Facebook to see if I haven't missed anybody. Um, I'm looking here and I'm not seeing anything. And I'm looking at the tribe of solopreneurs. I am not seeing any questions there either. So if that is all the questions for today or all that everybody wanted to share, then I thank everybody that was live here today for joining me live. You can join me live for next week's session. The link will be in the event that I create within the tribe of solopreneurs. If you want to have direct access and ask me questions live during the episode. And if you would prefer to be a little bit more anonymous and to just watch through Facebook, then that is perfectly fine as well. I hope again that this was valuable to you and I hope to see you all again for next week's episode. This will be number 60, a real milestone in my HSP TV episode. Um, episodes, yeah, that would be the right word. So I hope that you will all join me next week for the episode. And um, yeah, there's nothing left for me to do than to wish you either a really good morning if your day is just starting, a really good afternoon if your afternoon is starting, or a wonderful evening if you are in a similar time zone as mine. Thank you for being here and I hope to see you all again next week. Bye everybody.